Hey guys, Death Dealer here. Welcome to a brand new series on the channel we're going to be doing. Now, the idea of this series is we're basically going to be doing all of the technical side of Minecraft, and I mean all of it, but we're going to be doing it by ourselves. So this means that this is going to take us a really long time to do. We're going to be building all types of farms of varying complexity, and it's going to be a lot of fun. The world we're using, the seed fruit is in the description, and basically the plan for this episode is the first half we're going to go to the end, and kill the ender dragon so we're basically going to do like a mini speed run we're not going to time it or anything like that we're just going to do it as fast as we can and then we're going to get a starter base set up maybe with some like villager breeders and stuff like that anyways with that being said let's get into this so i already know the what's in the world what is where so what we're going to do is the strat we're going for is we're going to raid at least three buried treasures which we should have one over this way i think Yes, yes, over this way we've got one. Unfortunately, there's no trees in these starter islands. So we're going to have to walk a little ways. Uh, what I'll do is, on screen right now, you'll be able to see the, the world map. It's quite large, as you can as you can tell. But yeah, um, this should be a lot of fun. So I think what we'll do is, since this is going to take us quite a little while to do, I'll cut in between different bits and pieces in the world that I find interesting and then hopefully this shouldn't take us all that long to go and defeat the ender dragon. Alright so we've found our first buried treasure, uh, it should be right below here you can tell by the stone that's kind of sticking out and being wheeled there. Yeah look at that awesome so we're gonna take all these goodies, oh yeah this is gonna speed up this process a lot and we'll take the food as well because we're gonna need that. Awesome, right let's head over to the next one. Alright so we just found our first bit of dry land that has trees so let's go and get three logs and that should be enough to craft some basic tools. Okay there we go that's three logs, let's do some crafting. Awesome and I think what we'll go for first is an axe because we can then cut down some more trees. So using the wood we just collected, we crafted a boat and now what we're going to do is we're going to excavate some more buried treasure. So there should be some right below here. So if we go down a few blocks, there we go. Awesome. Oh, and look at that saw. That's perfect. So we've got basic tools, we've got plenty of food and lots of other goodies. Awesome. Now what we need to do is we need to get out of here. I guess what we can do as well is we can kill these sheep. Oh, there's just a one sheep right here actually. What I'll do is, since we have enough iron, I think we're going to make some shields because we need a bed. And obviously we're heading to a village so we'll be able to get a bed there. But there obviously there's no guarantee if we'll get there before night time. Okay, right. Now we need to wait for this guy to regrow as well and then we can continue on with our adventure. So we've got the bed crafted and now we're heading north towards the village. And look at that, it's night time. So we can now sleep our first night in this brand new world. I'm also collecting all the sugarcane we find as we go because yeah we're going to need this for upcoming projects. So we're only a few hundred blocks north from where we previously uh, slept and look at this, this this bit of terrain here looks really cool, let's see. Uh, I've never seen a bit of terrain like that obviously, like the terrain generation is a bit strange at times but yeah this looks really cool, wow. That is awesome to look at. Oh, and look at that as well. It's got like an underwater archway as well. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so we've arrived at the third location where the buried treasure is, and we can see it's right there because that looks very strange. So let's just go down. Mine this stuff. I should have made a shovel. That would have been smart. And would you look at that? Oh, that's a lot of iron, gold, food. I'm going to leave the prismarine shards that are kind of worthless to me right now. But yeah, that's awesome. Right, uh, let's head further north. There's one more buried treasure I'd like to go to, and then we're going to head towards a village. Below this sand should be the final buried treasure we're going to loot today. So let's go down, and there you go. It was only one block below. Awesome. Look at that. Even more diamonds. We have so much diamonds right now. And we're not even, like, barely 20 minutes into playing this. This map. That's awesome. Gonna take all that TNT. We've got to use that for TNT duples and things like that. But yeah, look at that. Seven diamonds. We'll be able to make a bunch of tools, maybe even some armour, and who knows, we might even make an enchanting table with this stuff. So we've just entered our first village, this is mainly to get a reliable source of food. Now bear in mind we do have a lot of cooked fish right now, we've got at least 20 so that'll do us for a little while, but we want some backup stuff for when we are going to fight the dragon. So I just found a portal rune, I 
never even thought about these when I was planning out how I was going to do this episode. I planned on using a lava pool and doing the speedrunning portal method to get to the nether, but I guess we can do this as well. And look at that. Oh, there's gold. There's gold stuff here. Oh, that's awesome. In fact, we're going to take all this stuff. Uh, we'll leave those boots there. Oh, that's great. So we'll put some of this stuff on. We'll drop that. Put on that stuff so then the piglins won't give us any trouble and we can also repair the portal oh i i need i need a pick and hey, let me mine that we'll set up the portal and then we can go into the nether all right so we mined away the gold and replaced the obsidian there and we replaced the crying obsidian so now what we can do is we can go into the nether now i've set my spawn here so we can die we can just quickly pop back through and i've also deposited some of my materials in here so that we don't lose them but yeah with that being said, let's head into the nether. Now, I didn't, I don't know where we'll come out. We might come out in a basalt delta based on the position of things. Yes. Oh, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. In fact, no, no, this is fine. This is exactly what I thought would be if we use the other portal location, right? Now, we're going to need ender pearls and blaze rods. That's why we're here. Fortunately, there is a warp forest there where endermen spawn like a lot if that wasn't the case we could have just traded with piglins but that won't be necessary so let's make our way in there get some ender pearls and then make our way to another fortress so after going through all of the gold with pillager trade pillager trading no piglin trading and not getting a single ender pearl i decided to go and kill all the endermen myself and yeah we finally have the 12 ender pearls if we just quickly go into my statistics how many endermen did it 22 i went through yeah not having looting on your sword is so annoying. I forgot how much trouble this thing was. Anyways, let's head over to the nether fortress, which is about 500 blocks that way, and we can get the six blaze rods we need. And there we have it. We have the six blaze rods we need, and along with the 12 ender pearls, we'll be able to make 12 eyes of ender, because the end portal we're going to be using requires all 12. Yeah, I know, it's a bit crazy. Anyways, let's head back into the overworld and start making our way towards the stronghold. Alright, so we escaped the nether. It really didn't take that long, a few minutes since I knew the path. And we made our way over to the stronghold. Now, I've just realised my sword is low durability. So we're going to have to use our axe if the bed uh, trapping method doesn't work. And yeah, uh, through the trading with the piglins, we got some spectral arrows. So I made a bow using the string we got from them as well. So we now have... Well, we've got another weapon, which is good. Anyways, uh, now what we get to do is we get to pop in here and set up the portal, which we're going to do right now. Let's watch out for these guys. Break the silverfish spawn up. There we go. And we're going to block up this area right there. Excellent. Now, we get to activate this portal. Let's make sure we don't do this incorrectly because I don't want to lose any of please eyes there we go awesome that's that, that's that's really good right well i guess it's time to go into the end so without further ado let's do it oh boy oh this could be a lot better this is a really bad position oh no okay let's bridge over as quick as we can oh this isn't good ah Quickly does it, quickly does it. Yeah, went out in the middle of the void. It's been a while since I've had an end platform spawn like that. Okay, almost there. Awesome, there we go. Perfect, now let's get up. Guys, over there, let's go and prepare the end portal itself. No, it failed. No. Oh, this is going to take a while for me to do. Damn it. Okay, well, I guess. No, that doesn't work. Oh. And, okay, MLG water bucket. No. Oh, God. Damn Enderman. I didn't even look at him. Ah, that's, that's just great. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Oh, that could have been a lot better. That could have went a lot better. Oh, not bad survived. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, I thought I was going to be one bed down there. Now, I made the mistake of placing my respawn bed basically like 400 blocks away from the portal. 
which was kind of a bad idea on my part. Oh well, I guess I will. Take out some of these end crystals. Now this fight wasn't going anywhere. Anytime we do damage to the dragon, it just healed back up. So I went and destroyed all of the crystals. I used the water bucket to get up to most of them, all the high ones, which was definitely interesting. And yeah, now all we need to do is kill this guy. So let's get ready. I think we should place the bed now. And now it's just a waiting game. Now we need to be fast when we do this. Because, well, yeah, this can be problematic. Got that. Ah. What I'll do is I'll just leave the replay buffer on and we'll get this guy killed. Oh boy, that was close. Okay, let's sit down here and heal up for a little while. Nearly there. No, not close enough, no. Damn it. Okay. What we need to do is we need to do the rest of it using melee damage. Five arrows left. Okay, right now he's going into sword mode. We got this. Oh, he's so low. Oh, I missed. I missed. No, come on. There we go. Woo, we did it. Let's play some water in case any endermen get angry. There we go, folks. We did it. Halfway through episode one, we killed the ender dragon. With no base, nothing. And look, there's the first end gateway. We could go and get an elytra right now if we really wanted to, but we won't be doing that. Awesome, right. I'm going to collect this XP and then we're going to head back into the overworld. Alright, so we made our way back to the village since we set spawn on the coast. It was fast and simple enough to get back here. Now, look at that. We have 65 levels of XP. So I think we should do a little bit of enchanting. However, we do have a bit of a problem where we only have seven diamonds so we're going to need two diamonds for the enchanting table that's going to leave us with five and to start off with i want to make a pick so then we don't have two diamonds left after that now ideally it'd be a fortune three pick and after that we don't have two diamonds left so we couldn't really do anything with it unfortunately so what we're going to do is we're just going to ignore this part for now and we'll do this later on in the episode because I have an idea for this thing. Anyways, what I want to do now is I want to make my way to the nearby Mushroom Island, which should be behind that hill and over there a few hundred blocks because I want to set up my starter area on that island. Mainly because, well, mob, hostile mobs can't spawn there and I've got to be doing some villager work to start off this series, so I want them to be perfectly safe. So let's make our way over there and see what the terrain is like. Alright, so the area closest to the village is perfectly flat, or close enough to perfectly flat, which is quite nice. And then towards the back, which is to the south? Yeah, to the south, it's more hilly. Let's go and see how hilly it is, because I'll probably be doing other projects here, such as like a main storage and things like that. Okay, yeah, that's quite hilly. There's a lot of uh, height variation here. Okay, yeah, we could probably terraform all this in the future anyways. But yeah! This is going to be our starter area. So, to start off, we are going to bring over four villagers because we're going to be constructing a villager breeder. Not just any villager breeder, the villager breeder I designed. So here's my villager breeder design. I'll leave a block by block tutorial in the description if you're interested in how this is constructed. But as you can see, it's a fairly simple build. And look at that. We just saw it working. Now, the idea is basically we need to take advantage of the way the baby villager mechanics are where they try and walk towards beds and jump on them. With this design, when they try and do that, they fall down this little drop chute and then you can follow them into a collection area. Sometimes it can take a few minutes for them to 
Pathfind over there. It isn't instantaneous like with previous designs, such as the original Impulse SV design you can see over there. That design works now if you do some more modifications to it, but I wanted to do my own thing, which is why we have this. But yeah, that's all there is to this design. It's fairly simple. Once again, there's a video link in the description for a block by block tutorial. But yeah, let's go back onto our technical Minecraft world and we can start gathering the villagers we require for this project. All right, so we have the four villagers we need to start off this breeder. I am going to have to go and get some more beds. We need at least eight beds for this to work properly for, for each side of the breeder. But yeah, what we're planning on doing is we're going to use this little area I have terraformed made it all flat and this is where the villager is going to be housed now this thing isn't going to look the best it's going to be fairly basic fairly quick fairly rigid not really much to it it's a episode one build we don't have any materials to make this look good so we're just going to build it and have it produce villagers for us now obviously i need to go and gather the beds we need some glass uh, some wood for trapdoors. I have wood on me but we're starting to run out so i'm going to, need to go back to the mainland and harvest some more and then we'll have our villager breeding set up, ready to go. All right, so I dug a hole for the villager breeder and I decided to decorate it as well, doing the standard stone and polish and the thing I like to do. And we're using some stripped spruce logs for a little border here. And yeah, it looks quite nice. Now, before I put these villagers in, I want to get some glass because obviously we want some glass to separate the villager holding cells from the beds along with a glass roof up here. Now I have some sand, but I need to go and get a lot more. So let's go and collect some from, say, a beach that's nearby somewhere. All right, so we're now ready to get these guys in place. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to pop on down here and place some water. We right, we shouldn't actually need any water. In fact, no, 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 we don't need the water. Them taking damage shouldn't actually cause us any trouble. I'm just going to pop out of here. We're going to break this ladder. And that's fine down there. We can just go and pick it up. And now all we need to do is bring these guys here, like so, and bring them down. And it's the same process again. You know what, we'll just do it with all four of them since it's super quick and then we'll get them out of the boats. So we'll pop in here, move forward, there we go, and that's this cell done. Awesome. Now let's place this ladder here. Go back up, get this guy in place, so we'll drop you down like so. You'll get stuck in the ladder and there you go. Let's get out of here and then the last guy we need to get in place, we'll do this now. Now, in theory, we don't need to put a glass roof on it. We could have just done this on the surface. But since this is on the coast, there's a chance of mobs coming out of the ocean. So like drones and things like that, which we really didn't want to handle. So yeah, uh, what we do now is we put on the glass top. I would prefer to use white stained glass, but we don't have access to bone mill at this current point in time. So this type of glass will work just fine. Okay, we ruined some of that there. There we go. Cool. So this thing is now done. All we need to do now is get these guys out of the boats and then this breeder is fully operational. Well, not fully operational. We need to deal with the baby villagers that come out of the bottom of it. But... We're going to do that next time when we're going to be working with these guys because next time we're going to get our basic crop farms up and running. Automatic of course, so we'll use villagers to automatically harvest some carrots and then eventually potatoes because the carrots are going to be the main food for this farm. But yeah, I'll let me get these guys out of the boats and then we can end the episode. So there we have it, the villagers are out of the boats and this thing is ready to go. But yeah, I'd like to thank you for watching the first episode of this brand new series so far. I know it's something a little bit different, let me take off the cell look. It's something a little bit different from what we normally do. The whole technical stuff and you know speedrunning the dragon at the beginning. That took longer than I want to admit. But we did it. We got the dragon all done and now the end is open for conquest which is quite nice. Anyways, uh, in terms of frequency of uploads for this series, we're going to go two episodes a week. So it's the same as Autocraft and it's going to be like the day before the day after Autocraft releases typically so yeah then you'll have plenty of stuff to watch we're also going to be doing some tutorials as well coming up soon so make sure you stay tuned for that and remember to subscribe